Hello, I'm Evan Brain, an online functional medicine practitioner and a board certified holistic nutritionist. Today, we're going to look at another case study from the clinic. I've seen over 3,000 cases in the last decade, 26 plus million downloads of the podcast, 500 something interviews done, and I've learned a lot. And as soon as you think you know a lot, you realize you don't know much at all. And I just try to continually improve myself as a practitioner. And truthfully, being in the clinical practice, working one-on-one with people is the best way to really expand your knowledge and improve your skills with improving outcomes in chronic illness cases. So anything from anxiety, chronic fatigue, depression, joint issues, insomnia, skin issues, autoimmune problems, Hashimoto's, for example, you name it. All of these issues have a root cause, but in many cases, it's multiple root causes. And so what I try to do is use functional medicine testing to reveal what's hiding underneath, possibly for decades before someone finally discovers it with my help, and then we create protocols to help those people. And I've done that literally thousands of times. I've condensed all of my learning and education and protocols and trainings into my functional academy of medicine and epigenetics that's an online school where you can enroll in various courses to help yourself or your clients if you're working in practice maybe a nutritionist a yoga teacher chiropractor naturopath medical doctor do we see it all and all these people have implemented what i've learned and they've had amazing success so we're going to dive right into a case study here and i'm going to show you what's happening under the hood when you see this constellation of symptoms what that may actually be caused by So here we have Caitlin. This is a 34-year-old female that came to the practice. Her main issues, which there were way more than what we could fit on the page here, but weight loss was one particular issue. Possible SIBO, chronic fatigue and muscle fatigue, Hashimoto's, massoactivation syndrome. As you may know already, if you have massoactivation, that could cause potentially a 100 different symptoms. So really, when you see massoactivation here, this could be a massive, massive problem, a big umbrella of symptoms, if you will. Anything from chemical sensitivity, food sensitivity, dizziness, vertigo, POTS, insomnia, anxiety, you name it. It could all be related to the mast cells being overactive. So let's look at some of her labs here, figure out what the heck's going on. Well, initially, anytime I see that constellation of symptoms, my first hunch is, hmm, it's got to be mold. Is it just more than mold? In most cases, yes. So in her case here, how we measure these are by doing a fasted urine sample, and we can measure these organic acids. So think about if you're in a state where maybe you have to test your car for emissions, and they measure the exhaust pipe, and how much pollution is coming out of that. Well, that we can infer from that data coming out of the exhaust pipe, so to speak, in the urine. We can see organic acids there that are correlated to various internal issues. So in this case, we see elevations right from the start. This long word here, 5-hydroxymethyl-2-ferroic, this is a marker that indicates aspergillus, meaning this woman was living or working or breathing in a water-damaged building that was growing aspergillus, likely so much of it or for so long that now she's colonized, meaning she's growing aspergillus, likely in the intestinal tract, potentially in the sinuses and other places. And so this is important to use herbal antifungals to address this. Now, there are some, Richie Shoemaker, which is a medical doctor who's taught about mold for a long time, there are some Shoemaker-trained physicians out there that will use prescription medication. I found that not to be necessary. I'm not saying it's a bad idea, but I haven't found it to be necessary. And we have so many before and after case studies showing that this stuff that we use on the natural medicine side actually works. So this oxoguteric acid was high. You can see here the little triangles way out of the bar. So that's another indicator of a fungal yeast overgrowth. More aspergillus indicators here on number four. Number seven, arabinose. That's candida. And if you look here, right at number six, tartaric acid, just a decimal point away from being flagged high as well. So this is a major mold problem. She also, right here, has fusarium, so tricarbolic acid. That's linked to fusarium, which is another type of mold that grows in a water-damaged building. So this is a freaking mess. And this would cause all of her symptoms right out of the gate. We can say, yep, this is your biggest smoking gun. Now, will we find other things? Well, let's find out. So number 10, hyperic acid. We see that's 
over 300 points high. That indicates that she does have bacterial overgrowth, so her suspicions about that were correct. Page chooses to picture. We don't have to learn that right now. Page three, surprisingly, the mitochondrial function looks pretty good. So typically, we're going to see a lot of damage here. We're going to see markers either too low or too high. And surprisingly, this is good. So when I see chronic fatigue, I know it's linked to the mold toxicity, but at least the mitochondrial component of her chronic fatigue, I think it's a minimal piece of the puzzle. Now, you will see some wacky things happen with brain chemistry when there's mold in the equation. A lot of times you'll see low neurotransmitters. Now, she may have been taking some sort of amino acids to help boost dopamine because it was a little bit on the higher side that threw off this HVA VMA ratio. This isn't a huge deal breaker. This doesn't really change protocol too much. The serotonin here was high. Maybe she was supplementing some 5-HTP or something that likely increased that. So overall, we're probably not doing too much right now with the brain chemistry. This will likely self-correct with what we're doing. Down here, some of the ketone markers, these are pretty typical to see in a fasted person, especially if they're on a lower carb diet. So this really doesn't change game plan too much. If they're crazy high, it could indicate other issues, but in this case, we're not worried about these. Nutrient levels, she must have been, been on something, some kind of good broad spectrum multi. This is really impressive, especially for just how much toxicity there is here. Typically, you're going to burn through your B vitamins, your vitamin C like jet fuel. And in her case, you can see vitamin C was high. There's no way you get that without supplementing. B vitamins all look really good overall. Biotin a hair low, but nothing record breaking. Glutathione almost deficient. The higher this number goes on 58, the more deficient you are in glutathione, so that's not terrible. 59, that's a toxic exposure marker. It's creeping up. Doesn't surprise us with the mold. Down here, amino acid markers too low. The lab used to print out and say there's no clinical relevance to this, but I've done thousands of these, and I can tell you with confidence that anyone that has gut dysbiosis, mold, candida issues, they're likely going to show low in these. People that do better and feel healthier after our protocols on the retest, these always look better. All right, so that's quite a bit of a mess. Now let's look at the mycotoxin profile. We got to see something here, right? Because remember, she's colonized for aspergillus. So there's the ochre toxin that's created by aspergillus. The rest of the mycotoxins here said negative. Could be true, but it could be that she's so toxic, she's not good at excreting. And therefore, this could just be tip of the iceberg situation. The levels really could be much, much higher. Now, does that matter? Not really, because we're going to do the same protocol. So, yeah, pretty surprising, but okra toxin is the only thing that showed up. Now, let me point out one other thing here. So, fusarium. We saw that she had fusarium on the organic acids. Now, fusarium makes various mycotoxins. So, we have anadian B, we have zearolinone, and she's showing up negative. So, how is that possible that she has the mold, but she has no mycotoxins? Is her body just incredible at detoxing it? I don't think so, because of how sick she is. When we retest this, and we will, we'll likely see the levels skyrocket, indicating that she's getting better at pushing this stuff out. This likely just wasn't something she peed out that morning when she collected the test. All right, now let's see what this has done to the gut, because it can't be pretty, right? Well, page one looks good. All clear. Happy about that. Page two, she had some H. pylori. Now, this isn't record-breaking levels, but H. pylori was on the map. Some normal flora couple things here, but this is not freaking me out at all. She was likely supplementing some sort of uh, acromancia, which is totally fine. The overgrowth category, really surprising. I mean, there's a lot of stuff on the map here that's below where it's going to get flagged. So like Prevotella on the map here, Citrobacter. These are autoimmune triggering bacteria. This could have been a lot worse. I'm just surprised that it wasn't. Candida did get picked up here. Parasites, worms, supposedly nothing. Even the intestinal health marker, surprisingly good. No major gut inflammation, no bleeding. Glucuronidation pathway looks okay. Pancreatic elastase is decent. Fecal fat's not a major problem. Secretory IgA is low, so we can assume her gut's leaky just based on all the mold toxicity, the bacteria, and the yeast we found on the oat test. But overall, this stool test is not that bad. And so what I want to highlight is the importance of getting a broad spectrum functional medicine workup, getting a myco, getting an oat, getting a stool, because look, in her case, stool tests didn't look that bad. If all she did is do the stool, we would think, hmm, this lady's just crazy. There's not much here. Why is she so miserable? But when we see the organic acid in the myco, it paints a totally different picture and gives us a lot more insight to why she's suffering with the massive activation. 
So I'm happy to go into the protocol here. And this woman did absolutely incredible. And I love the, I love this stuff. So so let's dive in. Let me just show you what we did. Now we did not run a Lyme test on her because she told me she previously had a diagnosis. Now, was that a clinical? Was it a lab test? You know, you just have to listen to what they're telling you. And so if they said, yep, I've had Lyme and co-infections before, in most cases we pursue that. So what we did for that are some of these tinctures. These are different herbs that act against the particular bacteria and parasites we're working. So we had a Lyme, Bartonella, and Babesia tincture added to the mix. Because of the potential for die-off and detox reactions, we did do what I call my brain clearing formula. That's a Berber Panella. The next thing, which was really probably the most important thing to really stabilize her was the histamine and mast cell support. Because the problem is when you have that much mold, your mast cells are going to become activated. Mast cells are a type of white blood cell. They're full of histamine and tryptase and other inflammatory cytokines. Now, when you have mold or Lyme, Epstein-Barr, COVID, long-haul syndrome, etc., even vaccine has been shown to do this, those mast cells become overactive. They start leaking histamine out. Now you're going to have a lot of issues with potentially um, dizziness, anxiety, irritability. Histamine is a neurotransmitter. So when I say histamine, you think allergies, but it can affect the brain as well. My microbiome support two and three are what we decided on for antifungal, antimicrobial, anti-yeast support. So we'll start her on the low end because she's sensitive and then work up to the full dose, which is the two caps twice a day of those. This is a friend of mine's product that we carry, which is a adrenal liver slash chemical pesticide mycotoxin support. So that's incredible. A meal twice a day. We did, just because she was so ill, we did go ahead and throw in my glutathione which is an acetylated glutathione with NAC, just one cap a day, because that's probably all that she'd be able to handle anyway. We did do my extended release low histamine strains, very important, of ProBio 50. And then we did my Saccharomyces boulardii, which is an incredible beneficial yeast that's going to help us to kill the candida as well as act as a gentle binder. Now, since creating this protocol, I do have a new binder of my own. So we have switched her to my Detox Pro, which has the addition of bentonite. But this GI Detox has been great to us for years. It's a great formula. It's doing amazing work for her. However, the bentonite is going to give her even more broad spectrum support for heavy metals, mycotoxins, etc. So that's the protocol. So we'll run that for give or take six months. We'll switch things up along the way depending on how progress goes. If we find that she's not responding to the tick-borne illness herbs, then we'll likely just pull those out. So we like to add those in, see what happens, see if it feels like there's still an issue that we need to pursue there, or is everything okay, immune system has a grip on it, and the infection load is down. So this is how I approach things. This is how we look at things from a functional perspective. And this is how you can reverse your chronic illness. So if you are suffering, you need help, please reach out. EvanBrand.com has all the details. Also, you can access the Better Belly program where I put case studies in there just like this. And we show you not only the labs, but the before and the after and how we actually fixed the issues. So that is an incredible opportunity for not just practitioners. We have many in there, but this is for health seekers. This is for people like you that just want to learn this stuff and you want to geek out and you want to feel the best you possibly can based on a functional medicine practitioner who's done this thousands of times. It'd be like going up Mount Everest with no Sherpa. You're destined to fail and maybe die. No, you're not going to die with the issues that we saw on these labs. The truth is, however, very, very carcinogenic. Mycotoxins are very, very, very damaging to the liver, the kidneys, and the brain. That's Better Belly where you can learn so much. Also, the Better Energy program, which we're going to probably change the name. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't sound sexy enough for people. But the truth is this is a, a course dedicated to not only about mold, but it also shows you my testing strategy for chronic fatigue specifically. What do you look for on your labs that will clue you in to why you're so tired? So that's an incredible course as well. And then down here towards the bottom, the Better Home course. This is a lower cost course where I teach you about building materials and how to improve your home. And then Confident Coach. So any of my practitioners wanting to start or build or grow an online practice, this is the course for you. And then also consultations, those are always available at my site here as well. So this is Evan Brand signing out. Look forward to seeing you in the next one.